So an average day at Cambridge University is as follows. I would normally wake up about, university is not all about drinking, a productive 4 a.m., 5 a.m. On StudyTube, getting up early is seen as the pinnacle of productivity, an absolute must to start your day in the right way and to get work done. However, this is not the reality of the majority of Cambridge students. In this video, I will detail why getting up at the crack of dawn at university is not only unnecessary, but can also be unhealthy. Let's start talking about sustainable productivity. I wanted to start this video by talking about my daily routine when I used to get up at 5 a.m. at sixth form. From 5 a.m. until 7.30 a.m., I would get ready for school and study, so getting homework done. From 7.30 until 8.30, I would travel to school, and then from 8.30 until 3.30, I would have school. From 3.30 until 5 p.m., I would study after school. From 5 p.m. until 6 p.m., I would travel from school to my dance school. I would get ready for my dance class. And then from 6 p.m. until 7.30, I would have a dance class. Mum or dad would pick me up from the dance school at 7.30 and the rest of the evening until 9pm would be relaxing, eating dinner, maybe reading, probably watching TV. And as I previously mentioned, I would go to bed at 9pm to ensure that I was getting 8 hours of sleep ready to get up at 5am the next day. This was a great routine that really worked for me at the time. I mean, getting up early meant that it was silent, it was perfect study conditions. There was no one to distract me because everyone was asleep. I mean, I couldn't go on Snapchat because obviously no one would respond to my messages at 5 a.m. Beyond that, it was completely silent in the house. There was no one cooking downstairs or singing in the shower. And this meant that I could completely focus on my work. Furthermore, working whilst the sun rose was really special and it's something I do miss. And working in the mornings meant that I had a time limit. I had to get things done. By the time I was ready at 5.30, I only had two hours to get all my homework done before 7.30 or to get whichever task I was doing completed. This gave me a lot of motivation, especially because I'd specifically gotten up early and rearranged my entire routine to get up early. So it meant I had so much motivation to get work done. Another advantage of getting up at 5 a.m., was it just felt special. It felt like it was just the universe in me and it was really calm and peaceful. I think that this is pretty well summarized by a Spanish proverb that my friend told me, which is Dios ayuda a quien madruga. This means God helps the person that gets up early and I just love it. I am naturally an early bird. I love early mornings. Honestly, they're just the best. So if I'm such a massive fan of early mornings, why don't I do it at Cambridge? Surely working hard in this moment of my life is even more important than working hard during A-levels and GCSEs. A very important skill that I've learned in my first two years at Cambridge has been adapting to your surroundings in the way that best works for you. I'm going to exemplify this by talking you through an average day in the life at Cambridge, and you'll perhaps see why getting up at 5am is not compatible with my university routine. To summarise, before I give the specific details, a university day is a lot more free than a school day. There are a lot fewer contact hours and generally there's no end of the day. At school, your school day might end at 3.30, that's when period five ends. However, at university there's not a moment of, okay, I'm leaving school and going home because it changes every day. At university, Studying is a lot more independent, and generally, socialising happens after 5pm or 6pm. This is because everyone's schedules are completely different, and the only time that you can guarantee that everyone will not have a lesson, and that everyone will be free, is after 6pm, as this is the absolute latest that you can have a lecture until normally 5pm. So an average day at Cambridge University is as follows. I would normally wake up about 8.30 and between 8.30 and 10 a.m. I would get ready, have breakfast and walk to Sidgwick's site. This is where I have the majority of my contact hours, not supervisions, but it's where I have lectures and classes. And this is the place where I spend most of my time during the day. I know that this is a long time to get ready in the morning, but I really appreciate this time as a bit of time for me. So normally I'm listening to podcasts in different languages to make sure that I'm maintaining all the languages that I'm learning and learning new words. 
From 10 a.m. until 11 a.m., I might have a lecture, for example, a French literature lecture. Then from 11 a.m. until noon, I would probably go to the library to study. English library is one of my favorites. From noon until 1 p.m., I would probably eat my packed lunch with a friend if I've got company. If not, I would just eat it by myself, reading a book. Then from 1 p.m. until 3 p.m., I would go to the library again to study. This might be with a friend. Recently, I've really got into study dates. So maybe you'd go study with a friend and get coffee as a break in between, something like that. But yeah, so 1 till 3 is a library session with a break in the middle. From 3 until 4, I might have a class. So for example, a Catalan language class. And then by 4 p.m., I'm pretty much sick of Sidgwick site. So I'll walk back to college with a friend. To end the study day, at 4.30, I'll go to the John's Library and study there for an hour and a half, once again, having a short break, slap bang in the middle. At 6 p.m., I try and stop working. Obviously, it's not always possible, but I do my very best to stick to this. So from 6 until 7, I might meet with a friend and get dinner. Maybe I'd cook, maybe we'd go to the college canteen. Then between 7 and 10.30, I would be doing cheer. So this is traveling to and from a specialist gym, which takes maybe 40 minutes, and then a lot of training. Side note, but physically leaving Cambridge actually really helps me completely turn off my study brain and just live in the moment, not think about work. Then when I'm back home at 10.30, I am tired. <laughs> it's time to mentally decompress, maybe watch YouTube, Drag Race, Netflix. So you will notice that a lot of my socializing every day will happen after 6 p.m., this is the moment when I just switch off my brain and say, okay, no, I'm not doing any more work because I need to have a section of the day which is just me being a human being and not me being a Cambridge student, if you understand what I mean. Essentially, this is the moment of the day when I mentally disconnect from work. And the idea of most socializing happening after a certain time is very different to school. So for example, at school, I would say that the study day is more social than at university. For example, you already have five hours of lessons a day at GCSE. And during these lessons, you would still be speaking to friends. For example, say you're doing French GCSE, you'll be in the class with your friends, and then you get taught something by the teacher for 10 minutes, and then you do 20 minutes of consolidation, maybe speaking work. Obviously, this happens in some classes, like my Catalan class, but other classes at university, like lectures, are more one-sided in the sense that it's the lecturer imparting information to you for an hour. At university, at least for humanities, we have a lot fewer contact hours than at school. So this doesn't mean we're just not doing any work. It means that in these hours, a lot of information is crammed into a small period of time. Whereas at school, you get given the information and then you'd consolidate it within the lesson. At university, they're giving you a lot of information, a lot of resources, kind of like a toolkit. So then you can go and consolidate this in your own time. Essentially, you get given the theory and get given another theory and another thing to learn. Whereas at school, you might just get given one theory and then do exercises, making sure you understand it before you move on. At university, you have to do the consolidation section in your own time. Essentially, at university, a contact hour is a lot more saturated with information. So to reinforce the analogy that I gave previously about a comparison between school and university. So in year 11, when you walk into a lesson, whatever it may be, French, maths, sciences, it's very general. So you will have friends in that class and you'll see them in that class. Obviously, it's not a time to just sit around talking, catch up, but it's a tiny bit more social. And you'll also be doing the same homework. So you have a lot of work in common with your friends. However, at university, the work is so specific because you've already done your general education, you've done GCSEs and A-levels, now it's your time to specialise. So at university, the vast array of topics on offer means that you can study something that directly aligns with one of your very specific interests. For example, at A-level, where you might have studied French A-level, which includes language, literature, film, etc. At university, you might study a paper on French literature in the 17th century. Obviously, this is a lot more specific. Because you are studying something so specific, the world experts that will be teaching your lessons are not able to dedicate you five hours a day on French literature in the 16th century. The teachers will have to divide their time between all sorts of different topics. This might mean that for this specific paper of French literature in the 16th century, your teacher only has two hours with you a week. This means that in these two hours, they're going to try and cram as much information in there as possible. And like I mentioned before, consolidate this in your own time. I hope that this analogy made sense, but even if it didn't, the main takeaway 
is that between school and university, the work and social life is very different. If we directly compare lectures to lessons at school, lessons at school are a lot more active, you're going to actively participate. However, in lectures, you're going to sit back and listen. This means that obviously, within a lesson at school is going to be a bit more social because when you're working on an exercise with somebody, you're still gonna to have to speak to them a bit. This means that at university, during the work part of the day, it might be a bit less social and there might be f fewer hours in which you are required to spend time with other people due to the independent nature of your study. However, do not dismay, this does not mean that you're going to be spending every single day of your life at university locked in your room just studying away by yourself. Rather, it just means we have a lot of the socialising that we do as students past the 5pm, 6pm mark. Whereas any clubs or societies that you used to be a part of at school would perhaps happen during the lunch break, at university, you can't guarantee that everyone is going to be free between 12 and 1 because someone might have a lesson at that point, someone might have a lecture, and even if they don't, they might have something from 1 to 2, so then getting from your faculty back to this club, it's just a logistical nightmare. So we do socialising with our societies or whatever it is after this 5pm, 6pm mark because at that point, like I said, no one is going to have any more lessons. The most social part of the day is the evening, and this is a big difference between university and school or sixth form. To give you a few examples, college parties start at 9pm and go until 1am, or beyond that, even if you are going to spend some time with friends but you're not going out clubbing, you can always just go to the pre's um, before a night out, so that'll probably end about 11pm. Please note that university is not all about drinking. I personally think that a lot of the time going to parties is just a chance to meet new people, speak to people, just mentally unwind. Other examples of socials which end late might be a cheerleading social or any sports society that you do. If they have a social event, it would definitely be in the evening. College LGBT events, um, Italian societies, concerts. Obviously, these examples are very specific to a gay language learner, so it would be different for you. But these are the sorts of things that are happening in the evening. Even if you have a bit more of a chill lifestyle and you don't want to be doing stuff every single day until 10pm, the main takeaway is that stuff just happens later at university. Like I mentioned in the example of my high school day in the life versus my university day in the life, my dance class at school ended by 7.30, whereas at university, sometimes they go until 10.30. Even if you are only socialising past 10 p.m. once or twice a week, it's still better to have a regular sleep schedule and get up a bit later than always get up super, super early because it's not sustainable at university. In order to get up at 5 p.m. and get enough sleep, you need to be going to bed at 9 p.m. and that means getting ready for bed at 8 p.m. If you're sticking to this and you're getting your eight hours of sleep every night and you're getting up at 5 a.m., this massively limits your chances of socializing at university. University isn't just about the degree, it's an opportunity to mix with other people from very different backgrounds and make lifelong friends. I appreciate that getting up early every morning requires a lot of self-discipline and I really admire people that do get up early because of that. However, I would encourage you at university to just let yourself have fun. You don't have to stick to this routine every single day. Who knows, maybe if instead of rushing home to go to bed after your activity that ends at 8pm, you actually hang around and go for a few drinks with your friends or hang around the college bar or go back to someone's room and just have a chat. This is a moment where you could really deepen connections with your friends. And at university, you're going to make lifelong friends. So please make the most of this. Essentially, the YouTube videos that I mentioned at the beginning, which show a productive 4am, 5am, morning routine at university failed to capture what they're missing out on in the evening. If they are still attending these social events, that's great, but they are missing out on sleep. If they are not attending these events and going to sleep early, then they are missing out on these interesting events that could enrich in their social life. If you are getting up early to study at university and missing out on sleep, as a consequence, this is absolutely counterintuitive since sleep consolidates knowledge into the long-term memory. Beyond this, you really need to care for your mental health and create a sustainable, productive study routine. I know that terms at Cambridge and Oxford are only eight weeks long, so you can think of it as a sprint and just work, work, work until the end of term, but eight weeks is actually two months. It's not that short of a period of time. It is absolutely crucial to care for your mental health and to avoid burnout at all costs. At the end of the day, you came to Cambridge because you love your subject, because you are passionate about your degree. So 
if you're working so hard that you lose that, it's actually really sad. Getting up earlier isn't always better. Prioritize your mental health, prioritize your social life. I hope that in this video I've been able to show you that university and college are very different, so your routines should reflect this accordingly. Getting up later can help you have a more happy, sustainably productive and healthy lifestyle.